Okay, it's uh, Kevin Louie here. Um, so thanks for the opportunity of speaking today. So the challenges in today's mainframe environments are typically the shortages of uh, system programming talent and shortage of specialized performance tuning expertise. The other point is mainframe platform is considered old legacy platform and is considered a very expensive platform by, uh, by some. So to counteract these fallacies, TCO should be based on cost per transactions, cost per IO, cost per batch job, cost per database calls, and then you may be pleasantly surprised, but uh, most, most um, customers are not aware of that. A lot of the independent groups um, don't get down to that level here. Anyway, regardless, the other point is mainframe platform technology continues to grow and leads in so many innovative areas and other platforms um, have and other platforms have duplicated uh, many of the mainframe innovations. However, to answer the question of the, of the high cost, one of the practical methods that's been identified uh, in, the, in the industry is we need to look at reducing MSU MRC costs and, um, and also understand the financial implications of different IBM container pricing models, IBM ELA optimization methods. So, so they're the biggest challenges today um, that sort of stated up there. Okay. Now, now the problem with controlling MLC, MLC costs is for many of the uh, customers is it's, as you can see, challenging, it's risky. Um, and then how, how to approach it, there's a lot of human errors like in the calculations and, uh, and it's an expensive process while people learn it. So. So most customers struggle. They attempt to try and reduce monthly monthly um, license charges, but they sort of have trouble figuring out how how can they approach it. And then also they don't have the they have a reporting tools that that doesn't blend itself too easily. They typically have to pull in a lot of disparate reporting data from different sources and try and make some sense out of it. Okay, so so there's big challenges there. So so how we can help is. We leave with the services side where we can do an initial performance assessment and then show you what is possible. And then if, if customers are interested, then we can dig deeper with the service offering with the extended performance analysis and actually come up with the recommendations to reduce costs and not impact performance. And in many cases, not only do we not impact performance, but we actually improve the performance as well. So, so there's dual benefits with it. And then we do have software solutions that do support the uh, services that we offer. We have a self, we have a ZWR, Z workload reported cloud reporting portal service that has over 600 reports there and, and that has been specifically designed to support our service. And then the ZGuard, which is more in the journey at the latter part, can make dynamic ch um, changes, modifications to the HMC to, ba to balance out the ALPA MSU usage and not impact performance there. So that's part of the journey there. So in summary, we have two, we have two key points. We lead with the services and we exploit the, the solutions on the right-hand side there. So, so here is an example of the two solutions. The, you can sort of log in via the web and you'll have your customer data there available to, um, to you with over 600 reports there. So it means that we don't need to install the software on the actual mainframe itself. And then the ZGuard is something in the future um, that can make the dynamic changes here. So, so the ZGuard is an on-premise software solution that dynamically balances all the available MSUs across our paths, you know, and adjusts the defined capacity settings to reduce the cost without impacting performance. And, and, and that sort of typically happens after about a year when customers have, um, have become very familiar with the services offering and the Z workload reporter. And once they understand the capabilities, then they may want to implement dynamic changes in the future there. So the, the ZWR data flow was, we're reading a few select RMF, SMF data, type 70 to 74, and then it goes through a, a Z compress to compress the data on the mainframe before it's uploaded via FTP. And then will populate the data and make it available through the ZWR cloud reporting portal there. And that can be fully automated there. 
So the journey to success is we start off um, in the first stage is the initial performance assessment where we'll take your data and then we'll present to you some of the opportunities that we see to improve performance as well as to reduce costs. Okay, and then if, if you like what you see with the initial performance assessment, then, then you may sign up with the Extended Performance Analysis EPA, which is a service offering, a paid service offering, and then we will come in and then do an extensive deep dive, and not only analyzing the tuning angles, as well as the MSU MRC cost reductions, but we'll actually, actually make uh, specific recommendations to, to uh, take action on that, execute on that. Then after that, and then all in conjunction with that, we have the cloud optimization reporting service, which means we'll obviously train you so you can take um, that the customers themselves uh, will have the ability to understand how to report and analyze the data themselves. And then further on in the journey is once the customers mature with the understanding of the ZWR services capabilities as well as the report, reporting capabilities, then we could look at implementing the ZGuard dynam dynamic optimization so that it's a hands-off and it can make intelligent dynamic decisions to optimize your LPARs and reduce MSU uh, MRC costs as well as ensuring your performance is optimal still. So here's an actual example of a recent customer where we actually carried out an exercise on the MSU MRC cost reductions. So the key point is Every, every customer situation is different, and that's one of the values of the service offering is that we have a, a lot of experience, expertise, that we can evaluate different customer situations and, and draw different, different conclusions and make recommendations, again, which is different customer by customer basis. So we had this particular customer a year ago uh, where the SCRT report was typically 75 MSUs. And then they upgraded their computer to a high-powered CPU model, and then then their SCRT report was 97 MSU, which was an increase of 22 MSUs. And they says, "Whoa, um, what's going on here?" So this was totally unexpected, um, was not projected, and it wasn't budgeted. So there was a a, a very serious financial impact uh, for this particular company. And, um, and then also they notice that they're, they're doing a lot of development work and, and you can notice that the development LPAR, LPAR dev went from eight MSUs up to 42 MSUs. So they had significant development requirements there, which, was, which wasn't sort of planned in their budgets for that. And then the development did decrease from 67 down to 55 MSUs. But the key point is the customer was not prepared for this. So this is where they reached out to us to, um, to help them out to reduce costs. Okay, so, so we, the ZWR Cloud Reporting Portal here, this is a four hour rolling average report with actual MSU over the, over the January month here, and it shows you both LPARs and development and production LPARs there with the actuals. And then where I've highlighted in gray there, this, the ZWR Cloud Reporting Portal tool allows you to zoom in, so you highlight the period of interest, and then you can zoom in, and then you can generate the same graph um, with, in more detail, which you'll see in the next screen here. So, so this matched up to the peak SCRT uh, monthly peak hour here, so we wanted to investigate this a little bit further here. So this is the same as the, as the preceding slide before, and you notice that there's a heavy load of, of development um, in the blue there, in the production in the green below there. So development is a very large component during this peak period here. And then if you right mouse click, you have the ability to drill down directly down to either LPAR container group or into LPAR service classes or into report class levels by particular LPAR. So it means with, with, the, with the one graph, you can drill down and investigate in more detail what's driving the um, high consumption. And then this next one is an example here. We drill down to service class level and it shows you that uh, in yellow, the predominant driver is DB2 turf underscore P1. And that's, that's the significant uh, 
service class that's driving the uh, production alpha during this peak SERT hour. Um, and just for your information, so the orange one below, the second one, is actually DB2 Perf underscore period 2. So DB2 Perf, P1 and P2 are the significant drivers and the yellow, yellow and the orange color there that you see. And obviously, um, and you can also export all this data out to CSV file format if you want to do more detailed analysis with, with our spreadsheets as well. And then this one here is drilling down on the development LPAR. And you can see that the significant driver is the development um, service class called BAT norm, BAT, BAT, which is really batch normal period three here. So there's 35.3 MSUs over this of the same SERT peak hour period here. And then you can drill down further and then you can identify the actual batch job in detail, which is D, D3 V MS 37R, which is 81.62 MSUs here uh, during this sort of busy period here. So so you can see it's, it's really quite easy um, using this cloud reporting portal, ZWR report, where we can drill down from the kick level, identify the heavy consuming outpass, drill down, identify the top service classes consuming all the resources um, for a particular outpass, and drill down and find out exactly which jobs and how much is it consuming here. So typically most customers um, wouldn't have the tool sets and they'd have to run um, multiple reports to generate uh, separate reports for each of that then try and merge that data together. But as you can see, we're just drilling down from this tool. We can get there very, very quickly. And typically, you'll find there's tip only one or two or three top service classes or top jobs which are consuming the resources. So once you can identify that, then you can make a lot of decisions moving forward and helping to reduce MSU, MLC cost. Okay, so, so this here is showing you the um, production LPAR for our rolling average and actual MSU. So I'm just sort of breaking it out by individual outpass. And you can see that starting off in January and then by the time you get to the 31st of March, uh, you can see the trend of the four hour rolling average is reducing and the actual MSU is, is reducing. And there are a number of reasons which I'll point out as we move forward. And then this one here is showing you the, the uh, DevL Alpa, the development Alpa here. And it was fairly high, and then obviously you can see that it's reducing on the right here. And now what you see here in the grey is what we call defined capacity. So we're basically capping the, the, the development alpha. And we know that the development alpha is predominantly um, sort of batch workloads, and they don't really have um, real hard, fast, time critical um, service levels. So that means we can elongate the 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 job elapsed times, the running time, and that gives us the opportunity of capping and, and uh, capping and limiting what development is doing. Otherwise, um, the development workloads could be driving the SERT uh, costs really high, especially when the development batch jobs don't have time critical requirements here. So, so the recommendations, we started off by going from 60 MSUs, capping at 60 MSUs for the development alpha down to 55, and now, and now we're going, we'll, we'll be moving to 50 MSUs there. And as you can see, there's opportunities potentially to even reduce it further. But we've taken this incremental step because we don't want to, um, you know, use the Big Bang Theory, um, where where you may alarm customers and you could obviously impact. Uh, there could be some implications of performance. So, so we're sort of doing in a phased uh, phased approach, just to be very careful. Make sure monitor it. Make sure the customer is satisfied that performance is okay, and that we can keep progressing um, in a phased implementation approach. And then here, this report is showing you the overall group capacity limit, which which is for both the production and development alpha. Initially, it was not capped, and then the initial one was set up to 97 MSUs, which was the SCRT peak that you saw earlier. And that was purely to test out that the group capacity limit was um, was working. Now you'll notice that there are some gaps in the data, and we discovered that even though we set the the group capacity limit permanently, then for whatever reason 
they got disabled by itself. Uh, we checked all the log files. There's nothing in the log files to indicate that anybody had manually turned off the uh, group capacity limit. Um, and then obviously got escalated to IBM. Well, IBM identified an HMC fix um, that there was a problem with this, and so the, the fix has been applied, so you can see it's been pretty good. So, the, so we were going with the group capacity limit rules. We started off with 97, we went down to 90 conservatively, we went down to 85, and now we're moving down to 80. And um, potentially there's opportunities to move it down further, but again, we're just taking this very careful, systematic, uh, sort of phased implementation approach to make sure there's no issues, and then we'll, then we'll step it down lower. Okay. Now the other, one of the, one of the alarming findings um, by us going in there was the ZWR has two very nice reports here. One of them is the uh, zip MSU usage. So, so this shows you initially when we got in the, looking at the data in January, uh, there was no zip activity here on the zip specialty engine there. And although they did have zip engines, um, you know, somebody forgot to activate it. So that's the bottom line. And then the second report below is what they call ZIP uh, on CP MSU report. And that shows you the uh, ZIP eligible workloads running on the general processor. Now the key point here is the, the, the any, any work running on the general processor, including the ZIP eligible workload, um, is subject to the MSU MLC cost. So it's part of the SCRT um, you know, peak four hour rolling average. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's an enormous cost there. So you can see it spikes up to uh, 70 MSU. If you look at the second graph down here, and typically it's, it's, about, it's over 20 MSUs there. So once we activated the uh, ZIP specialty engine, if you go back to the top graph on the right here, you'll notice that um, it's working correctly. It's between 25 to 30 MSUs, and there's spikes where it can go up to like 80. 90 MSU, so that's an enormous savings by by activating the zip engine alone and offloading that work from the general processor engine, which which um, where there's a direct cross cost with the MSU MLC charges there. So that was a that was a tremendous find that the customer really appreciated. Um, and if we weren't there, then I don't know how long they would have been running without the zip processor activated. <laughs> but anyway, that's what happened. Okay, and then one of the things we can do is we can get down to very granular levels and we can, we can sort of specify which jobs of interest, batch jobs of interest um, that we want to look at, and then we can generate tabular reports um, and have a history, history of, the, of that particular batch job. And then you, and then you, can, you can evaluate the performance elapsed times, uh, you've got the Zip usage, you've got EXCPs, and then you've got the CPU time here, and then and then you, we can develop ratios with that, so you can compare each batch job if it's not performing well, and you can look at like CPU to lax ratios and uh, EXCP to uh, you know to uh, CPU, and develop different ratios so that you can evaluate a particular job performance over a period of time here, but. Um, it's a separate thing. So that's just really just showing you we can get down to the batch level, look at the history, and really analyze batch job processing, and you know, and then you can evaluate whether it's making service levels or not. Okay. So in summary, in this particular case study, and again, I'll repeat, every every customer is different. So what you're seeing here, if we work with a second customer, it'll be totally different. But this is what we carried out for this particular customer. So again, the initial SERT peak was 75 MSUs. After the upgrade, it went to 97 MSUs. And then they had a shortage of system staff and they had really no experience in performance tuning and definitely nothing in the MSU, MLC cost reduction. But they knew they needed to reduce cost and that's why we got engaged. So there was, so we, there was a joint ZWR, IBMC optimization services and this was, this was the findings in stage one. We're going back for stage two, three and four. Um, in the near future, but this, this, this is the findings after stage one. And then on the development side, it, it wasn't capped, and that was really driving the SERT um, 
high peak for our rolling average. So we capped that, and now we, we're basically moving towards from 60 down to 50 MSUs. The group capacity limit from 97 down to 80, and there's opportunities in the future for us to, to even reduce it further. Okay, we activated the zip specialty engine. Now the other key area, which I don't discuss much, but it will be in a future uh, webinar, is WLM tuning is really quite critical. WLM basically uh, where you prioritize your service class and your workloads, and then you set goals, um, you set goals and importance levels for it. So the key point is with WLM tuning is you're really trying to protect your critical workload when your CPU is busy. And in most cases, when the CPU is not busy, a lot of customers are lulled into a false sense of security that every a false sense of security that everything is performing extremely well. But essentially, when the CPU is running really high, that's where if things aren't tuned very well, and uh, in most cases with our mainframe customers, they don't look at their WLM policies um, maybe for 10, 20 years. They, They've initiated by a systems programmer 10 years ago or 20 years ago and they've left it and uh, nobody has really come back and reviewed it seriously. So there's a lot of new thinking um, to streamline and make WLM tuning very efficient. Um, and if you've got plenty of capacity, then, then poor WLM tuning policies can disguise the fact that, they, that, they're, that there are really issues that should be addressed. And if, as we get into capping and MSU, uh, MLC cost reduction um, initiatives, we're basically um, squeezing how much CPU is available uh, to the mainframe, and that's going to accentuate the importance of WLM tuning. And then obviously, um, prison waiting factors is a way that you can uh, guarantee how much CPU resources is available like to the development and the production ALPA. And again, if you if you've got plenty of spare capacity, it, it doesn't matter how the prism weighting factors are configured because if there's spare capacity, um, the RPARs are just grabbing the available resources. But again, when the CPU is running at the maximum, then it's critical. The um, the guaranteed allocations in the prism weighting factors um, will only allocate what you guarantee when the CPU is running at the maximum. And if you understate, like for your production power, what it should be getting if, this, if the um, mainframe process is running at the maximum, then you're, you, then you're gonna seriously impact production. And again, you can disguise the fact with that when you're, when you're not running um, very high, it doesn't really matter um, what your prison waking factors are, um, have been configured at. But now it's becoming more critical for both WLM and prison waking factors they need to be looked at when you're looking at MSU MRC cost reduction, and that's why they're included here. Okay, so um, next slide. So here, just using this example, um, the financial benefits. So this is after the um, ZWR IBM Z optimization um, services. This EPA, there are four EPAs each quarter. You know, stage one, two, three, four. So after stage one, essentially, we've identified um, savings of uh, 17 image use by going from 97 to 80. And then, and then that translates to a net present value of 104,000 after one year. And the break even, as you can see in the diagram um, on the right here, is after six months. Internal rate of return is 30% after one year and return on investment after one year is 104%. And, um, and I've got sort of three scenarios here. The one on the left um, is just showing straight up with SCRT MSU MRC. But we've talked to the customers, there's opportunities they should um, do, do their best uh, when they come around with ISVs um, negotiation time or renewal time to renegotiate to a sub capacity and see, what, and see what they can do here. So these are, the second one is just saying that if they are successful, and getting the ISVs to go to subcapacity, and typically ISVs account for a significant higher dollar value compared to the IBM life software licensing. Most customers have very high ISV um, portfolio value. So if they if they are successful in renegotiating for for um, subcapacity of ISVs, then obviously not only are we reducing costs from the IBM software and maintenance side. Um, that are based on subcapacity, 
but also if, if ISVs can be involved with that same scenario, then you can significantly uh, increase your savings here. So I was just giving options that hypothetically, if you had a one-to-one -one, uh, ISV to MLC savings, then that would double. And then I'm saying that because ISVs typically are significantly larger than IDN, then theoretically, if you had a two-to-one ratio, then it could sort of triple triple your savings here. So that, that's the intent of the slide. Now, obviously, um, we're making assumptions of $1,000 uh, per MSU savings per, you know, per month. But obviously, it could be different with each customer. But this is just a model here. And you know, people could plug in their own numbers and come to a different conclusion. Could be more or less. OK. And then the, the other key point is with uh, ZWR, IBM, ELA optimization. And um, so where we can help as a service offering is helping, helping a customer establish the correct baseline. Because what, what IBM will typically work with the customers with is um, projecting you know, one, two, or three years um, what the monthly capacity would be uh, or what the monthly SCRT should be each month. And then, they, then they're going to track that. Um, and if you go over the monthly SERT um, projection, then you actually have to pay a penalty. Now, if you go significantly under it, then nothing happens. So it means, in, but it does mean in effect you are paying more than what you than what you really should have. So it's really important um, to optimize your baseline for the IBM ELAs that you need to have a bit of a buffer, but you shouldn't have so much of a buffer that you're paying a lot of uh, money unnecessarily. So that's something we can help you with. And then if you are flying very close to the wind of, um, of, the, of the, with your projections, the actuals versus the projection is very close, then we would use the same um, ZWR, IDMC optimization services, um, MSU, MRC cost reductions, with techniques that you saw previously and other methods to identify um, cost savings opportunities or reductions in MSU so that you can make sure that you remain under that baseline here. So, so that's what we can do in conjunction with the MSU and MRC cost reduction is help out with IBM ELA optimizations using similar methods here. And, but more importantly, helping the customers establish the correct baseline, okay? So it puts them in a very strong, uh, negotiation um, point with IBM next time. Thank you for checking our channel. According to statistics obtained from different events around the world, such as the IBM Tech U, eight of every 10 systems administrators are looking for ways to implement automation and analytics in their daily work to increase their productivity. We have this and many other solutions to help you embrace the power of automation making your IT infrastructure more efficient in different areas, such as storage, disaster recovery, virtualization, mainframe, and many more. Go to svasoftware.com to find out more or contact us directly. Thank you.